Back to Zimbabwe now, where journalist Tapiwa Zivira laments what he calls a worsening situation. He now joins us from Harare in Zimbabwe. A very good evening to you, uh, Tapiwa. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the Globe. Okay. Uh, good evening to you, and uh, thank you for hearing me on your program. Well, just how serious is the food shortage? I mean, the situation, according to United Nations sources, is so bad in the urban areas that several people are surviving on just one meal. Yes, exactly. Um, the situation is very bad because we are looking at a situation where the prices of uh, goods have gone up uh, probably by 20 times, considering inflation has gone up. And uh, the people's incomes have not uh, been matched. For example, um, a 10 kilograms uh, bag of millennial meal, which is a basic meal, now costs about 100 Zimbabwean dollars, um, whereas the basic salary is about $600 for many of the people in Zimbabwe. So which areas uh, in so the broader Zimbabwe is hardest hit? Um, it, uh, if you find uh, the mostly it's um, low-income areas, uh, where people do not have uh, as much income. And then uh, if you go even to the rural areas, most people who rely on people uh, who are working in the urban areas are also even hit harder. This situation has been branded as a, as a man-made crisis or a man-made food crisis, but is the drought the real reason people need food or are there other reasons that we should know of? Firstly, uh, in Zimbabwe, especially in rural areas, uh, we must note that uh, food aid is given uh, and controlled by the government, even if it's coming from non-governmental organizations. So we have serious reports of um, uh, partisan uh, distribution of food aid. But apart from that, uh, this has been linked mostly to uh, what is seen as government um, reckless spending on uh, priorities uh, that uh, do not um, uh, have the people in mind. Uh, for example, uh, where the president hires guests and travels and spends millions when they could actually use that money to uh, rescue the situation. We have had a drought and certainly social services must be looked into. But if you look at our situation in Zimbabwe, social services are not as funded as other uh, areas where we feel are not uh, priority areas. Is the United Nations working directly with the lobby groups or with government departments, perhaps? Sorry, can you come again? Is the United Nations working with some of the lobby groups or, uh, you know, civic organizations or even government departments? Yes, certainly um, the United Nations um, here works uh, through its uh, agencies like the Food and Agricultural Organization and um, other uh, arms and also with other civil organizations and also most importantly with government uh, in its implementation. But also it's uh, important to know that the UN has a limited, limited role in influencing how government uh, works because uh, it certainly will, will work within the status of the uh, country. I mean, it's no secret at all how deeply polarized Zimbabwe is along, uh, along political lines. Um, I mean, is there, are we likely to see uh, issues where people who are going to be excluded because of political affiliations? Certainly, certainly there's been... Um, uh, this is historic. It has not started today. We have had many situations where people are divided across political lines, or if um, an, an organization wants to rescue a situation, maybe um, give some food aid, they may be bad simply because they are seen to be um, a pro opposition. Uh, this is how polarized we are. Well, Zimbabwe President Emerson Nagagwa's government will, of course, uh, scrap its plan to remove grain subsidies next year. A move, it says, will protect impoverished citizens from rising food prices. Do you know anything about this? Yeah, certainly uh, there's been reports about that, and this has been uh, uh, touted by others as privatization of um, food. Because what uh, that will mean is that uh, the price of grain, which is our basic meal here, will go up 
and the basic person who is already not affording uh, to buy mini meal will not be able to do that. The prices of bread will certainly go up. And uh, whilst this is an effect on um, the business, uh, it, we would see it as capitalistic because business itself would benefit from that because they can now sell at their own prices. Um, but uh, when it comes to government uh, uh, and the people, the people will suffer. All right, Tapiwa, thank you so much for your time. Uh, much appreciated. That was Zimbabwe journalist Tapiwa Zivira joining us now on the line from Harare in Zimbabwe.